Have you ever thought of sliding through the Mojave Desert at a speed of 200 miles per hour without any traffic and the need to travel through plans to reach Las Vegas to Los Angeles? Is it possible in just two hours? Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, it's happening right now. In today's video, we're diving into the future of American travel a future where high-speed trains finally enter the U.S. mainstream. We'll discuss why the Brightline West project is being built, the innovative tech powering it, and what it could mean for the American economy and environment. And trust me, you'll want to stay until the end to find out how this desert bullet train might set off a nationwide rail revolution. Welcome to Future Builds, where we explore the biggest and most impressive construction projects, along with the mysterious stories behind them. Let's dive in. For decades, the U.S. has been noticeably absent from the global high-speed rail conversation. There are countries whose trains reach 200 miles per hour. While France, Japan, and China stay ahead in the game, the U.S. falls back due to a patchy and underfunded rail network. Amtrak's Acela is the fastest passenger train in the U.S., only hitting a speed of 150 miles per hour in stretches between Boston and Washington. So, why hasn't the U.S. caught up? Well, that's because of the infrastructure. Building high-speed rail in the U.S. is notoriously challenging due to outdated tracks, bureaucratic hurdles, and car-centric urban planning. But now, Brightline, a private rail company that successfully launched America's only private inner-city rail in Florida, is betting big on the West. Brightline West aims to bridge this gap by introducing the nation's first true high-speed passenger rail system, connecting Los Angeles and Southern California over a 218-mile route. This project is not just about speed. It's about redefining American train travel with modern, eco-friendly solutions. Brightline West is a $12 billion high-speed rail project currently under construction, connecting Las Vegas to Southern California. The route will link to existing Metrolink services in downtown Los Angeles and include stations in Victor Valley, Hesperia, Las Vegas, and Rancho Cucamonga making travel between these points convenient and efficient. But this project is more than just a faster alternative to driving or flying. It's a statement. Private enterprise can deliver modern, fast, and large-scale transportation solutions. The 218-mile route will run along the median of Interstate 15, connecting Las Vegas with Rancho Cucamonga, just east of Los Angeles. From there, passengers can seamlessly transfer to Metrolink to reach downtown LA. The high-speed train, reaching speeds of 186 to 200 miles per hour, will cut travel times to just two hours and 10 minutes, nearly half the time it takes by car. Brightline West broke ground in April 2024, with plans to be fully operational by 2028, just in time for the Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. And yes, the project has federal backing. The Biden administration approved $3 billion in funding through the bipartisan infrastructure law, alongside $2.5 billion in private activity bonds. The U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said, People have been dreaming of high-speed rail in the U.S. for decades, thanks to the president's leadership and and that of members of Congress like those here, as well as our state partners in Nevada and California, the men and women of organized labor, and the terrific work of Brightline West. We're creating good American jobs to deliver this project. 10,000 construction jobs and then a thousand permanent jobs to maintain and operate the train line. I want to recognize Brightline West, President Biden, my department, Nevada and California organized labor, and the leaders here for making sure these are not just jobs, they're good union jobs. So how exactly does Brightline West plan to achieve these high speeds? Brightline West has selected Siemens Mobility to manufacture the American Pioneer 220 train sets, a variant of the Valero Nova platform. These seven-car trains will accommodate up to 450 passengers at a speed of 200 miles per hour. Notably, the trains will be assembled in a new facility in Horseheads, New York, adhering to Buy America requirements. The project is also using advanced automation and real-time monitoring systems that will alert operators for possible issues in the track, braking system, or electrical connections. This predictive maintenance approach will increase safety and minimize costly 
monthly delays. Track design plays a huge role. Unlike Amtrak, which often shares tracks with freight lines, Brightline West will have its dedicated double track corridor. This will allow precise scheduling, smoother rides, and higher speeds. The use of welded rail ensures minimal vibration and noise, while advanced signaling systems will maintain safety at ultra-fast speeds. Safety has also been a top priority from the beginning. There will be no at-grade crossings, meaning no intersections with cars or pedestrians, reducing the risk of accidents. Overpasses and underpasses will be built along the route, with protective fencing securing the entire track. If you're enjoying this deep dive into one of America's most ambitious infrastructure projects, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We cover future-focused builds just like this one, from hyperloops to vertical cities. So if you're into innovation, you're in the right place. Let's talk about money and the planet. First, the economic potential. According to Brightline, the project is expected to create 35,000 construction jobs and 1,000 permanent operations roles. It's also forecast to generate $10 billion in economic impact across Nevada and California, not to mention increased tourism in Las Vegas and more commuter options for Southern Californians. Then there's the environmental case. The fully electric system will eliminate an estimated 400,000 tons of of CO2 annually by replacing 3 million car trips each year. With Southern California battling air pollution and climate-related changes, Brightline West is being touted as a climate-friendly solution that aligns with California's aggressive carbon reduction goals. The train stations themselves will be green, too, designed with LEED certification standards in mind, incorporating solar panels, EV charging stations, and multimodal transport links. There's also a broader sustainability impact to consider. By helping shift travel away Away from gas-powered vehicles and short-haul flights, Brightline West supports a longer-term decarbonization strategy. Aviation accounts for roughly 9% of U.S. transportation emissions, and while cars are far worse overall, domestic air travel between cities like L.A. and Vegas is notoriously inefficient and polluting. As of now, Brightline hasn't announced official ticket prices not even a ballpark figure. With four years of construction still ahead, CEO West Eden said the company is hardly ready to set prices right now. That said, Eden's has hinted at some possibilities. High-speed rail lines around the world typically charge between 50 cents and one dollar per mile, and Amtrak's Acela, America's fastest train, averages around $1.25 per mile between New York and D.C. If Brightline West follows a similar model, a round trip between Rancho Cucamonga and Las Vegas could cost upwards of $400. However, Eden's also emphasized that pricing will likely be dynamic dynamic, shifting with demand, travel seasons, and how it stacks up against driving or flying. In short, don't expect flat rates. Expect flexibility. So, what makes Brightline West more than just another transportation project? The extended network of Phoenix and the integration of California's high-speed rail system serve as a potential for more similar projects nationwide. This high-speed rail expansion could demonstrate more public-private partnerships to enhance the infrastructure of the U.S. It's the potential domino effect. If successful, Brightline West could serve as a model for high-speed rail across the U.S. Already, there are murmurs of expansions connecting Las Vegas to Phoenix or even extending the network north toward San Francisco. And with ridership expected to hit 11 million annually by 2030, it sends a strong signal. Americans will take the train if it's fast, reliable, and comfortable. The U.S. may be late to the high-speed party, but Brightline West could be the tipping point that brings a rail renaissance to the states. The project also proves that public-private partnerships can work. Brightline is leveraging private investment, government support, and public enthusiasm to pull off something once thought impossible in the American West. And beyond the West Coast, states like Texas, Illinois, and North Carolina are watching closely. If Brightline West meets its ridership, sustainability, and economic goals, it'll set a new benchmark. Federal and state agencies might finally overcome the inertia that's held back U.S. rail projects for decades. Let's not forget about the passenger experience either. Brightline is not just promising speed, but comfort. Think Wi-Fi-enabled cabins, ergonomic seating, 
food and beverage services, and seamless digital ticketing. It's luxury with velocity, a fusion not often seen in U.S. transit. So, now it's your turn. Would you hop on the bright line from Vegas to L.A.? Do you think the U.S. needs more high-speed rail projects like this? Let us know in the comments. We read every single one, and your thoughts often shape our future videos.